If you thought the movie Ready Player One was pure science fiction, think again, because so far I had the opportunity to try things such as haptic gloves, haptic suits, motion simulators, small farm headsets and even the Oasis are technically already here. It may come as no surprise that in the film most of this tech were just fake props. But what's interesting is that one device was in fact real and that's the treadmill that you see in some of the beginning scenes of the movie. Yeah, that moment when Wade hops into the van and calibrates his treadmill getting ready to jump into the oasis is not CGI or done by practical effects. Nope, it was a fully operational prototype. Crazy. Upon discovering this, my curiosity overwhelmed me because I, I just had this sudden desire to literally step into the future just as Wade did and finding out if this treadmill indeed is the true gateway to the oasis like the movie portrays. The only issue is that it had been ages ago since it hit theaters and many props used on set were either destroyed, sold off or given away after filming wrapped. At first I, I couldn't really find any solid information regarding the treadmill's fate so I had to ironically backtrack its steps. After a few days of intense research I came to an unexpected conclusion. It wasn't built by Warner Brothers or IOI in this case but was borrowed from a small company specialized in treadmills called Infinadec, a name I am funny enough uh, no stranger to. You may remember that I once did a Ready Player One photo shoot for the Guinness Book of World Records and I don't think I ever told you this but at some point we considered renting Infinidex treadmill to use on location. In the end we changed our plans because things were super chaotic and we went for a DeLorean instead which was freaking awesome too of course but all of this had been a funny coincidence cause back then I wasn't aware that their treadmill got featured in the movie as it was heavily modified to fit inside the van with only its top part showing. The company and treadmill actually share the same name and was developed long before there were even plans for a movie. So I decided to email Infinidec expressing my enthusiasm as a big fan of Ready Player One and asked if I could maybe come by to check out their famous treadmill. And um, to my surprise they said yes, they agreed and at first I couldn't believe my eyes because I was like these guys are way too busy for someone like me but no, they were like totally down and just a few weeks later I purchased a plane ticket and flew all the way from the Holland land to the states for a demo. Their office, located in California, had a modest appearance. The entrance displayed a handful of accomplishments in their treadmill manufacturing work and a large warehouse extended to the back. Next to the whole demo room hung a movie poster of Ready Player One and alongside that a still frame of that legendary scene, getting me of course extremely pumped for what I was about to experience. So this was it, the moment of truth had arrived. Yeah, they opened the door and there it was, the Infinadec. A treadmill that I and millions of others had once seen on the big screen was now in front of me in this small room. One that had most likely been in the same space as Steven Spielberg when he directed the movie. While well, I was completely starstruck and geeking out over this device, I got to meet Benjamin Freeman and Phil Martin, part of the nine member Infinidec team. Both uh, super passionate guys by the way, who were willing to answer all of my questions. They told me that the Infinidec is the world's first commercially viable omnidirectional treadmill that allows you to naturally walk in any direction, creating this personal holodeck experience which lets you take a stroll through any virtual environment. Currently over 70 Infinidecs are being used across military research facilities, universities and digital innovation centers. Thanks to this treadmill, soldiers can be trained in hyper-realistic scenarios, it provides educational opportunities for first responders, aids in medical rehabilitation and, as we have seen, being utilized for entertainment. 
What will blow your mind even more is how this treadmill works. But uh, before we dive deeper down that rabbit hole, note that the version I got to try weighs a whopping 700 pounds, with a length of 69 inches, a width of about 58 and the height sitting at 19 inches. It supports uh, Unity and Unreal and is OpenXR compatible. You probably also want to know its insane price tag, but more on that later. Stay tuned! So uh, instead of the safeguard being mounted to the ceiling like in the first scenes of the movie, here it was attached to the treadmill. Worth uh, mentioning is that this Guardian system is available in various structures, making it suitable for different use cases. In the movie, there is even a moment where we see the treadmill being used without one at all. Since this was my first time on the Infinadec, they obviously didn't let me try that. Initially, uh, Wade uses a mobile VR headset that he later upgrades to an even more advanced unit with a pass-through built-in. Sounds familiar, right? because uh, in reality we're slowly getting there too with uh, devices like uh, the Apple Vision, MetaQuest and more to come. The Infinidec does in fact work with uh, standalone headsets. But as of right now, to ensure the most optimal VR experience, they still recommend sticking with uh, tethered ones. It just still runs best on software that relies on external Steam VR tracking, that's being used to control the machine and optimizing the data outflow to guarantee minimal latency. That's why around my waist they let me wear a tracker that helps the treadmill know your physical location so it can adjust to your steps accordingly. What I'm trying to say is that the Infinidec can't feel or, or see where you are on its own, so it relies on assistance from an external source. Although, as we speak, there is already another treadmill in the making, called the Infinidec Portal, which will have a markerless uh, tracking system. But uh, shh, that's all I can say for now. Hooked up to a smart pulley system was my headset. In this case, a big screen was nice enough to provide me with one of their headsets on location. I absolutely love the big screen beyond, especially for PC VR stuff. Its size and being custom built to the shape of my face were the perfect choice for this occasion. So a huge shout out to big screen for making this experience so much more immersive. What's cool is that they let me choose what I wanted to play on their treadmill. Of course I had to go for Half-Life Alex. I mean what else and oh yes VR chat but First, I would have to warm up to their in-house experiences. Simple but effective demos that introduce you to its mechanics. Starting at a moderate speed, I had to walk through a maze, trying to find a treasure chest. The feeling of using the Infinidec for the very first time felt like nothing I had ever experienced. Being able to move in multiple directions is truly magical. Interestingly, this is done by two motors and a bit of engineering magic. One motor moves the black belt into an almost a straight line like a regular treadmill and the other can move it vertically. So from afar it may sometimes look like I'm moonwalking, but when we zoom in you can clearly see how this belt moves in two directions. Combined, this mechanical witchcraft lets you walk forward, backward, sideways and diagonally. Oh, and the fun fact, what looks like a number of black belts is just one single piece of rubber, longer than an actual soccer field or an American football pitch. As you start to move, the Infinidec tries to respond precisely in the opposite direction at the exact same speed and acceleration. It makes you feel like you are ready to take on the whole virtual world like Wade when he steps out of the lobby of the Oasis. While the belt offers enough grip for walking and jogging, a mastering turn still requires some practice. In this case, the Guardian system surrounding you helps tremendously during this learning process. Once I successfully found uh, the treasure chest, I was booted into the next demo, transporting me to Stonehenge for a bit of free roaming. This is where they uh, bumped up the speed a little and yeah, then you can see that the Infinidec can actually go from 0 to 4 miles per hour, allowing you to switch between walking and jogging. They have plans to get it to 6 miles per hour in the future. 
Having tried uh, way cheaper treadmills like the Cat VR and Omni One, it felt freeing to, for once, not have to wear special shoes like you're on ice. Thanks to the flat surface, you don't have to slide around, you kind of just move like a human being should, which felt very refreshing. When you're in motion on the Infinitec, it's quite accurate. But uh, when you decide to make a delicate or hard stop, you do notice that the treadmill isn't always fully capable of anticipating and simulating the exact same, causing a subtle latency effect that makes you not end up in the position you started in. This is another reason why you see me holding the safety guard in most of the footage. As mentioned earlier, uh, this is something they may be able to solve with the InfiniDeck portal and well we head into the next part of this video should also make less noise. Phil told me that the current decibel level is that of a vacuum cleaner slash air conditioner. Here's a clip of what that sounds like. It was then time for the real deal. I got to dive into Half-Life Alex, and oh man, uh, playing the game on a treadmill like this was a dream come true. Absolutely next level. At certain points during my playthrough, it really felt like I was moving through the streets of City 17. Playing it at a total different pace is like rediscovering everything from a new perspective. Your physical body starts to somewhat blend with the virtual world. The Infinitec team calls this dynamic presence and I can see where they're coming from. It's so freeing to go from a passive uh, standing to an active moving VR experience that clicks in your brain. It's not only a nice workout, but you can adapt far better to the game. It becomes more realistic and challenging in a good way. Despite the latency during stops, walking, climbing, crouching or kneeling worked just fine. You have enough room to move and use your controllers without hitting the safety guard. The only thing that does break the immersion a little is when you have to traverse a staircase or move over a slanted roof. They told me that they are looking into using actuators that could sit on each corner of the treadmill to enable a physical rise of a couple of inches to help simulate going up or down. Sounds genius and I can't wait to see where they're going to take that. All that's missing now is a deployable seat that you can use at any time for those moments you want to rest or have to drive a car for example. Anyways, there was still one experience left for me to try, which was VR chat. And my imagination of being in Ready Player One suddenly became more real than ever. I mean, getting to casually walk through a portal reminded me a lot of how it's being done in the movie. Ending up in all these magnificent places and interacting with various people had never felt this special. Just like Half-Life Alex, the, the moment you are fully immersed, this treadmill really starts to blur the lines between science fiction and reality. Now add full body tracking, a haptic suit and gloves to the mix and you never want to return to your human life ever again. I can definitely see why some would not mind completely digitalizing themselves and become official citizens of VRChat. Almost everyone I uh, met on the game was super kind, but they were almost all standing or seated players and many not yet realizing that when VR becomes more mainstream, this device could or maybe will be their future gateway. Of course, I'm aware that it will be a while before a treadmill like this will be in reach for the average household. But as time goes on, they will only become smaller and cheaper. Right now, if you wanted to own one, it will set you back just under $50,000. I know, that's an insane, insane amount of money. And the guys at Infinidec told me that they know this keeps the product focused on enterprises and a handful of exceptionally wealthy gamers. For them, the end goal is to bring the price over the coming years down to around the cost of a monodirectional treadmill, making that gateway to the Oasis accessible to most of us. Not only Infinidec, but also companies like Disney want to make this possible, with the latter recently showing off a next level holotel floor. But that's something I'll have to cover another time. So there you go, that's a glimpse 
into the future. Uh, what do you think of a treadmill like this? Would you be interested in trying the Infinidec? And what game or experience would you go for? Let me know in the comments uh, below. And that's it for me. Thank you so much for making this possible because without you guys, I would have never been able to show this off in the first place. Until next time and bye bye for now.